I'm Dr. Brad Hafford. Welcome to NoteNook, where I take a close look at a banknote from the relatively recent past. In this series, I'm analyzing paper money from around the world, paying close attention to one example in each episode. I'm covering money that's no longer in circulation and comparing what it tells me to what I can find out about the country's history and culture. As an anthropologist, I'm more interested in what money says than what it's worth, and it says a great deal about the government that issued it and the people who used it. Today, we look at a 50 peseta note issued in Spain in 1931. We begin by looking at the obverse, or front of the note. This side emphasizes the issuing authority and often carries an image of an important person from the country. In this case, the issuing authority is the Bank of Spain, El Banco de España, and it would pay the bearer of the note, pagará al portador, 50 pesetas. This emphasizes that paper money, at least in most of the periods in which it has been used, was a stand-in for what was considered real money, that is, silver or gold. But in fact, so long as people accept a thing as a basis for exchange, knowing they can use it for some other exchange in the future, it works the same way that silver or gold would. By specifically stating that a person could bring the note into the bank and receive 50 pesetas in silver, the user's level of trust was increased. The Spanish peseta in 1931 was 83.5% silver and weighed 5 grams. So this note stood in for about 209 grams of pure silver. That's approximately equal to 8.5 U.S. silver dollars of the day. The note was authorized on 25 April in 1931 in Madrid. The signatures of the governor, controller, and cashier of the bank are also included. Signatures of financial authorities, as well as serial numbers, are very often present on the obverse of a bank note. They lend authority and security to it, further increasing its trust in exchange. Below the signatures, we see the mark of the printer. In this case, the plates for the note were made in Surrey, England by Bradbury Wilkinson and Company. Of course, money was in short supply in this period. It was, after all, the Great Depression. And paying to have your money plates made in another country seems a bit odd and costly. But it was quite common, and this particular company had made the plates for Spanish notes throughout the 1920s. Plus, the printing costs were much less than the value in silver that the notes represented. This highlights a problem for all money issuers. They had to be concerned about people who might try to imitate the money and pass it off in exchange. A flood of counterfeit reduces confidence in legal issue currency and thus undermines the entire system. One of the main security measures of any paper note is the high level of detail in the design. This note is highly detailed and the geometric designs that flood the background are printed in blue, green, and even orange almost to the point of being modernistic and psychedelic. But there are more classical elements as well. For example, there's an almost architectural leaf design in the corners and on the sides, and they seem to support the webbed frame along with the rosettes. But I find one of the most interesting aspects to be the portrait in the upper left. A typical banknote might depict a political leader or monarch. Here, however, we have the image of an artist. He is Eduardo Rosales, a Spanish painter who lived from 1836 until 1873 and who specialized in historic scenes. Now, there's good reason for placing him on this note. Not only was he a great artist, but Spain had just ousted their king, Alfonso XIII. It was a people's rebellion, and the new money would choose to display the creative and productive aspects of society. In April of 1931, only 11 days prior to the issuance of this banknote, the Second Spanish Republic was declared. Socialist and liberal Republicans won the elections, and the king fled the country. Rosales was a talented painter, receiving the first gold medal for work by a foreigner in the 1867 Paris International Exhibition. But he also lived just up to the establishment of the First Spanish Republic in 1873. In fact, the Republican government at that time had offered him a position at the Prado Museum in Madrid. But he died the same year, and the First Republic itself dissolved only a year later. 
Some of Rosales' paintings had strong resonance with those who were establishing the Second Republic in 1931. And one of those connections shows in the watermark, which is another security feature. It's an area of varying thickness in the paper itself that shows a design when light shines through it. In fact, this one can be partially seen even without the backlight. It is the profile of a Roman noblewoman with an elaborate hairdo. She is Lucretia, lauded as a symbol of virtue and fidelity, who legend has it died around 510 BCE. It's a seemingly odd choice, a Spanish note depicting a Roman woman from nearly 2,500 years in the past. But there is a connection, and we'll see more of that as we examine the reverse. There's not a great deal of text on the reverse, simply a repeat of Bank of Spain, the assigned value, and the serial number, as well as the mark of the engravers. Colors are almost solely limited to purple here, and the design is much more classical than the multicolor and geometric kaleidoscope of the front. We see again a rather architectural frame, this one including columns that seem to support an arched frame, and there's a wreath and bow surrounding the number 50. The central scene is what really catches the eye, though. It displays what appears to be a theatrical production acted out on the notes stage. The man at right, wearing a toga and sandals, holds a dagger aloft, while the two central men support a fallen woman in robes, and a fourth man behind holds his hands clasped high as if in worried supplication. The woman appears to have fainted, but the scene is actually of her death. In fact, it is an engraved copy of an 1871 painting by Rosales entitled La Muerta de Lucrecia, The Death of Lucretia. So now we see the link to the Roman noblewoman in the watermark. As the story goes, Lucretia's death sparked a shift in Rome from monarchy to republic, and Spain had just ousted its royalty in 1931 when the note was issued. Lucretia may have existed, but the information we have of her story comes from about 500 years after her death. Legend states that she was raped by Tarquin, son of the last monarch of Rome and that she killed herself in shame afterwards. The terrible injustice perpetrated by a member of the royal family caused the Roman people to rise up and overthrow the monarchy. The people's reaction is represented in the scene by the man at right, who holds the fatal dagger aloft as he vows vengeance for the assault. So, what does this note tell us about Spain in 1931? Like Rome, long before, Spain was embarking on a republican government for the potential betterment of conditions for its people. The note is covered with symbolism to this effect, but it takes a good deal of research to recognize that fact. Spain had been neutral in the First World War, but it struggled with corruption in its government. After the war, various military dictatorships arose with little concern for the king. Banknotes of relatively similar look and feel to the 1931-50 Peseta note circulated even in this period of the 1920s. The printing plates were created by the same company, and anti-monarchial sentiment was already on the rise, so King Alfonso XIII's portrait did not appear. The Second Republic represented a people's uprising against both the king and the military regimes. It attempted to right many previous wrongs, but it often did this in a heavy-handed way creating resentment along the way. Some saw the laws as retaliatory rather than justified, and class strife increased. By 1933, the Radical Republican Party had taken control. Many felt the new regime was not legitimate, and violence erupted. When the Popular Front took control in 1936, more violence erupted, and Spain fell into all-out civil war. Monetary issues in 1937 abandoned gold and silver, switching to emergency fiat money in paper and brass. This note was meant to herald a new age for Spain, but that new age was, in many ways, as problematic as the one that had come before. Eduardo Rosales' painting of the death of Lucretia had also been problematic in its day. Though it won a medal, it was heavily criticized for what has been called a disconcertingly modern technique of direct and vigorous brushstrokes. The criticism it received hit Rosales very hard. 
he never again painted a large-scale work. Perhaps the Second Republic is somewhat analogous. Its disconcertingly modern technique was one of elections and workers' concerns, but these were pushed perhaps too directly and vigorously for the time, and so they met with much resistance that eventually led to a collapse of the larger-scale work. But today, Rosales' painting hangs on the Prado, praised as a masterpiece. The Republic, too, at least for its Civil War years in opposition to the fascists under Francisco Franco, should be remembered. I hope you enjoyed looking at this note with me. I'm Dr. Brad Hafford. Join me again next time on Note Nook, part of my series, Money Talk.